I have always been in a state of numbness. I refuse to grow up and despise all behaviors of abandoning ideals. Because I told myself that I was a fool back then because I wanted to do a great career. It all seems ridiculous now, and... Even though I haven't grown up, my body that can't stay up late tells me that I'm no longer young. So I think, what would have happened if I hadn't been that foolish back then? What would happen if I didn't make a mistake like that? What if I don't go to Beijing? Or? What will happen if I continue playing online games? There is no if in life, and there is no way to read documents. Even Beidend, that's your only ending. This is the game of life. This is the words of the author of 100 Days of Love in the College Entrance Examination, that's also what I want to say so I think, let's do it again. Will there be different outcomes in books and in the world of words? Keywords of the novel June, it is our song without pop-ups. June, it is our song without pop-ups. Download the complete TXT collection. June, it is our song with the latest chapter reading. Chapter 1 Graduation Ceremony You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 1 Graduation Ceremony The bell tower's bell pierced through the walls of the auditorium and leisurely reached Gu Yuan's ears. Compared to the cyclic playing of the March of the Volunteers, the soothing sound of the bell was like a clear spring in the scorching desert, refreshing people's spirits. Hey, Brother Yuan, what are you doing? What are you staring at? A boy behind him pushed Gu Yuan, it's your turn. It's my turn. What's my turn? Get your graduation certificate. Are you foolish? Oh, oh, yes. Gu Yuan took a deep breath and walked towards the principal with a stiff smile in front of him. Gu Yuan from class 1 of senior high school, congratulations on graduation. At the moment we received our graduation certificate, our protagonist, Gu Yuan, a former high school senior in class 1, had no sense of reality. He had fantasized countless times about how magnificent his high school career would be. However, in the end, he hastily received a red certificate from a middle-aged man who laughed until his facial muscles twitched. Sigh. Gu Yuan couldn't help but sigh as he stepped down, thinking of the huge gap between reality and ideals. The principal personally issues graduation certificates to every graduate, which is probably only something that this high school, which has always had a culture of freedom, can do. My name is Gu Yuan, 18 years old, standing at 177 meters tall and weighing 65 kilograms. My grades are in the middle range and I was admitted to a 211 financial and economic college in BJ. I have the highest IQ among all living beings in the world due to my reversed appearance. Gu Yuan, sitting on a bench in the hallway outside the auditorium, opened his notebook and wrote the first paragraph of his novel. This is not his Versailles. In this class where everyone has been admitted to the 211, Gu Yuan's grades can only be considered middle class. Then he quickly used a black signature pen to erase the section after his appearance, really, he couldn't even bear to see it himself, it was too fake. With his back against the French window, which is five or six meters high, Gu Yuan felt a sense of boiling blood as he allowed the hot sun to splash on his back. Nonsense, it's June now. Is it fun to bask in the sun? It's still boiling hot. Is it because the scorching summer sun isn't enough to bake you into melted ice cream, or are you a solar water heater charging yourself? A long-haired girl walked up to Gu Yuan and sat down, her big black and shiny eyes curiously scrutinizing the notebook in his hand. Like a willow eyebrow gently outlined with a brush, with an exquisitely carved jade nose, every part of her body has developed perfectly. This girl with a classical beauty style is Gu Yuan's classmate, Chi Yu. But if it looks good, Gu Yuan has no feelings for this guy. Their personalities are really not suitable. The origin of this strange name is said to be because there was no rain in the month of her birthday, which is a rare occurrence in this small town in Jiangnan. Therefore, her parents gave her a name that sounds very mysterious. What are you writing about? 
Chi Yu approached without any hesitation. Her personality was like this. Although she looked quite handsome, her personality was carefree, like brothers to Gu Yuan. In these three years, no matter how the seats in the class were adjusted, they never left the bondage owner of the Nine Palace grid near Gu Yuan. In Qi Yu's words, it means that her attack distance against Gu Yuan has always been one, which means that no matter where Gu Yuan mocks her, she will immediately be punished by her. I won't show it to you. Gu Yuan turned his back to Qi Yu and continued to write in his notebook, but unfortunately, Qi Yu has a mouth that can make people tense when speaking. Although his voice is very pleasant, his harsh words always make it difficult for the first-time listeners to accept the fact that this beautiful girl has such a natural nature. Hello, hello, it's a pity. Are you turning around and pretending I can't see you? If you keep writing like this and don't believe me, I'll break your pen. Gu Yuan looked at Qi Yu's fierce face and silently added, Moreover, he has a hot temper and is very dangerous. You. Shu. Chi Yu pushed him hard, but he smiled. Wow, Brother Yuan, what are you writing? Graduation gift. For whom? It's not a graduation gift, it's the beginning of the novel. Gu Yuan naturally handed the notebook to the boy who walked out from the entrance of the auditorium. Take a look. The male model with an inch head, a height of 183 centimeters and a weight of 78 kilograms, has a delicate appearance and looks thin when dressed. He is Gu Yuan's good brother, Feng Zichio, who is not a common science monster even in this class. What's even more frustrating is his excellent writing skills, and he even has a hobby of writing poetry. After handing over the notebook to Feng Zichio, Gu Yuan habitually glanced at Qi Yu's direction. The girl's expression was slightly unnatural, but much better than three months ago. Brother Yuan, to be honest, I don't think this opening is very effective, it's too boring, and it can easily make people lose focus. Um. Originally, I was just writing for fun, but if you were to write, how would you write? Gu Yuan raised his eyebrows and asked. I wrote a paragraph, take a look. Gu Yuan's gaze fell towards the direction of the notebook, and indeed, there was a large section of regular square characters on it, which was significantly different from his more elegant handwriting. The so dot called youth is like cherry blossoms, it blooms for the purpose of withering. Although life is short, it blooms like clouds, mist, and neon clothes, making people intoxicated. Even though this may be a struggle destined to be buried, the brilliance emitted in the process of hard work is as brilliant as the blooming cherry blossoms. Even if withered, it has once bloomed. Everything is not in vain, it will be accompanied by beautiful memories, imprinted in the flowing blood. Hey, isn't that equivalent to not saying anything? Although it's better than this idiot's writing, it's clearly not enough as the beginning of a serious literary book. Chi Yu pursed his lips, and Gu Yuan immediately cooperated by placing the paper and pen on her lap, making a, please, gesture. Hey, what are you doing? You can do it, you go up. Gu Yuan chuckled lightly. It seemed like a long time ago that he had been teasing Chi Yu so easily and happily last time. This feeling is really nostalgic. Cut, I'll do it. Let's show you what the first language proficiency in the city is. Chi Yu took the pen and started writing, and Gu Yuan's gaze also fell on her elegant and graceful handwriting, slowly moving. Memories are always so beautiful that they are not real, because retrospective narratives have always been a paradox. When you are in the current time, when you narrate something in your memories, you are standing in the current situation to generate your memories. This feeling is like I am bending down by the river and seeing my face in the water waves, but in fact, what I saw one second ago has already flowed away the next second. Nonsense, negative review. Gu Yuan made a big cross after the paragraph written by Chi Yu, and then received a blank eye from the beautiful woman. Wow, you guys are so lively. What are you doing? Gu Yuan is writing a youth novel, the kind with colors. Come and join us in disdaining this person who is only left with low dot level fun. 
Chi Yu pouted and said to the visitor. Black clothes, black pants, black shoes, black skin, black hair. This boy who is covered in black all year round is called Gao Yen, and he is the back seat that Gu Yuanlei cannot move. According to him, he wore it this way to appear less black, but the actual effect seemed unsatisfactory. Gao Yen, like Feng Zichio, is an all-rounder in both arts and sciences, to the extent that every time we finished the exam and got the papers together during our senior year, Gu Yuan felt like a waste. Youth Novels Do they still have colors? Hmm let me take a look. Chi Yu exaggerated his tongue and made an expression of wanting to vomit. These guys are really despicable. Don't listen to her nonsense, this is a serious novel that tells our story. Our story. Chi Yu, Feng Zichio, and Gao Yen were all surprised and stared at Gu Yuan with wide eyes. What's wrong, are you surprised? What else can I write? You don't think I have any imagination, do you? That's not true. I have a very clear understanding of your lack of imagination and humor, Chi Yu put his hand on Gu Yuan's shoulder. But is there really anything to write about our story? How come it's gone? For three whole years, aren't we doing enough? Um. There are indeed quite a few words to say, Feng Zichio and Gao Lian smiled at each other. Isn't that all? Look, I've already thought of the title for the novel, which is called, June, Our Song of Separation. Graduation season, youth pain literature, high school students, love, daily life, with complete key elements, this is the rhythm of a big fire. Keep writing, if you become a great writer, Gu Yuan, the school will find you as an honorary lecturer. Suddenly, among several 18-year-old boys and girls, there was an uncoordinated middle-aged man, but he was in his thirties. This person is Chen Gu, the homeroom teacher and Chinese teacher of Gu Yuan and his group. Although the pressure was so high that he seemed a bit explosive when he was almost going crazy a while ago, most of the time he was a kind and amiable person. All right, Teacher Chen, don't laugh at me anymore. How could I become a writer? With just that level, you don't know. Gu Yuan awkwardly patted his head and smiled. Okay, okay, you guys talk to each other. I know you're not happy here, but I happen to have something else to do. I'll leave first, and I'll see you at the restaurant later. Chen Gu waved his hand at these young people and turned to walk into the golden sunshine. Hello, Brother Yuan, are you the male protagonist of this book? Another handsome and clean boy walked over. This is the captain of the school football team, Lu Chen. Because his jersey number is number 6, Gu Yuan and his team like to call him Lu Chen when playing football. Of course, in the book I wrote, if I'm not the protagonist, who else can there be? Oh, who is that female lead? Lu Chen raised his eyebrows and joked. Class 14, Grade 3, Chi Yu, congratulations on graduation. Perhaps by some divine coincidence, the name of that person had just been announced from the side door of the auditorium in front of everyone. She is the starting point of all the stories at Gu Yuan High School, and also the end of his journey. Everyone fell silent, is the story of Chi Yu and Gu Yuan. As expected, instead of forgetting, Gu Yuan chose a unique way to record this unforgettable experience as a memory. Hello, hello, why aren't you all talking? I'm going to live stream writing here. Gu Yuan picked up his notebook and black signing pen with a big smile. I've already thought of the name for the first chapter, and it's called, Starting from the Unscrupulous Dream. There are flowers and rain outside the landing window behind them. Time seems to stagnate and flow backwards at this moment. It's back to the morning three years ago, the same flowers and rain, the same people. Everyone's story starts over from that June. End of this chapter. Chapter 2 Starting from Unscrupulous Dreams You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Starting from Unscrupulous Dreams Three years ago, June 10th Coming down from the dormitory building, passing through the automatic sensing door, and walking through a long avenue, 
Gu Yuan raised his hand and glanced at his watch. It was only 6.15 p.m., half an hour earlier than the time set by the class teacher. This advance made him feel at ease. This is a habit that Gu Yuan has always had, leaving enough time for possible accidents, such as encountering monster people or fake face knights, or stepping into a space vortex and being teleported to a different world, all of which require time to deal with. As for why I stayed here in high school on June 10th, when I was supposed to prepare for the high school entrance examination a week later, it was because for Gu Yuan and his team, the high school entrance examination was already a formality process. As a student recruited by high school two months before the middle school entrance examination, Gu Yuan was forced to leave his lovely classmates and come to this class that gathers the most bizarre group of guys in the city. Let the flames purify everything. Die, bugs. Your soul will be tormented. Still at the stairwell, Gu Yuan heard the voices of two boys from the neighboring dormitory. He stood at the door of the classroom, looking at the figures in front of him who twisted into a ball while reciting magical words. He sighed lightly and then walked around. Good morning. Morning. After greeting his desk mate Chi Yu, Gu Yuan walked to his window seat in the back row and sat down, then lazily lay on the table. It's another tired Wednesday. Wednesday is the most painful time of the week because it is far from the weekend and long from Monday. Human diligence and passion often fade away on Monday and Tuesday, and gradually recover under the longing for Sunday on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Wednesday happens to be in an area where neither side is concerned, and it is a gray patch that no one can care about. Ah. Ah. No. No. He 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 he. The two playful people in the hallway finally decided the winner, and one of them, tall and thin with a flushed face, was suppressed by a slightly shorter boy under his arms, seeming to have lost the battle. As the number of people in the classroom gradually increased, Gu Yuan also straightened up and sat up, his gaze wandering around for a moment. Some were eating breakfast, some were reading magazines, some were doing exercises and reading books. After a while, he started early reading, followed by math, physics, Chinese, and English classes. Such days are monotonous, and for Gu Yuan, his only expectation is the two music classes per week and one activity class per day. Perhaps the carving class on Friday is also worth marking with an asterisk on his calendar, but as someone who sneezes at the sight of stone powder, Gu Yuan doesn't really like this class. What are you looking at? After the first class, Gu Yuan, who came back from the toilet, glanced at Qi Yu next to him. This guy was focused on looking at a few colorful posters. The internal version of the poster for the club's recruitment was obtained from several colorful senior students. Do you have anything you want to participate in? Recruiting new students in clubs. Isn't that something that I calculated should only start three months after new students officially enroll? I mean, we don't even count formal high school students, so you've already started thinking about clubs. Hey, this is a special opportunity exclusively for our two classes. Those seniors said that if you join now, you can be considered as the seniors of those new students' senior. A senior who doesn't know anything. And then being ridiculed by a versatile newcomer. I can already imagine that scene. Gu Yuan picked up the cup of water on the table and took a sip, almost spitting it out. It's so hot. Gu Yuan spat out his tongue and desperately breathed in the air. This was clearly the water he put here last night, how could it feel like the hot water he just received? Ah. I forgot to remind you. Just now when I went to the storage room to pick up water, I helped you pick it up together. It's boiling water at 98 degrees Celsius. Chi Yu cleared his throat and then put on an obviously pretended concern look, his schadenfreude smile almost unable to hide. This guy was definitely intentional. Gu Yuan thought, shaking his head. Forget it, there's no need to argue with this guy. Hello, do you want mint candy? Chi Yu raised a small light yellow bottle in her hand. Gu Yuan sighed and then spread out his right hand. Besides the small bottle containing mint candy, 
there were also a few colorful posters that were stuffed together. Okay, then take a look. The folk music performance troupe sincerely invites all students who can play any folk music instrument. The activities are rich, and there are also beautiful spring, summer, autumn, and winter tours organized by the president's senior sister. The drumbeat team is the only officially designated band in the school, guided by a professional music mentor. TKS Martial Arts Society, Taekwondo, Muay Thai, and Jeet Kune Do, give me a month to give you a lifetime of peace. A year ago, I was like you, and a year later, you will be like me. Gu Yuan couldn't help but twitch when he saw the end of the poster, which even included a photo of a boy with six-pack abs. Astronomy Society has a fixed stargazing activity every Thursday evening at 9.40 p.m. The activity will be held at the Southwest Point Observatory. The school athletics team welcomes all students who love sports. The football team recruits new players with or without foundation. Interested parties can go to Yang Tianchen's office in Class 1 of Grade 2 to collect the trial registration form. Abnormal Human Research Center Gu Yuan scanned the posters one by one and found that Nanhua High School is truly a famous, free, high school in the province. It is a miracle that this kind of club, which is regarded as a snake or scorpion by school leaders in other places, can thrive here. Sigh. I'm not very interested, Gu Yuan put all those fancy posters back on Qi Yu's table, leaving only one. If you insist, this seems to be okay. Ru Shan Literature Society. Aren't you good at sports and Western musical instruments? I remember you were still the record holder for the 1000 meter school record in your junior high school. Chi Yu seemed surprised by Gu Yuan's choice, blinking his eyes with some confusion, hey, you probably have taken a liking to that beautiful senior sister from her, it's too vulgar. What kind of person do you think I am? Gu Yuan picked up the poster with black lines all over his head, pointing to the line of text in the upper left corner and said to Chi Yu, look here, a school magazine composed of student submissions is issued every year. That's what I'm concerned about. What you're talking about, the president and senior sister, I didn't even notice it just now. You didn't notice, how do you know that the beautiful senior sister I mentioned is the president? It's not important, what's important is that I have a literary dream. Gu Yuan looked up at the sky outside the window at a 45-degree angle. I want to write a great novel and become a writer who will be remembered for eternity. Literature Dreams you. Writer. Chi Yu suddenly sat upright and examined Gu Yuan from head to toe, then smiled and lay down on the table. Ha ha ha. Gu Yuan, you really have a sense of humor. This joke is so funny. Dot. Wait, this expression, are you serious? Dot. A person who is about to turn 16 but hasn't even read all four great classics wants to become a great writer. Hey, M.O. Yen was still herding cattle when he was 16 years old. He won the Nobel Prize in Literature, why can't I? Ha ha ha. Gu Yuan, do you know that there is an idiom that is particularly suitable for describing you and your dreams? What? The Arabian Nights. Alright, if you want to laugh, just laugh. Anyway, I'm going to book this literary society. Gu Yuan tried to put the poster in his stomach, but at that moment, Chi Yu snatched it back. What are you doing? Are you planning to monopolize this opportunity like this? Aren't you planning to participate? When did I say such a thing? Chi Yu asked in response. Dot. I can remind you that participating in the literary society requires an interview, and the president and senior sister are not a fuel. Efficient lamp. Chi Yu rolled up the poster and put it in his desk, saying, The question is, I think it should be some literary knowledge or something. Don't answer it wrong. They are someone who has won second prize in the new concept essay competition, and they are different from us. The thought of not being able to even qualify for the new concept competition in his second year of junior high school made Gu Yuan feel a chill in his heart. In the afternoon's free activity class, 
Gu Yuan followed Qi Yu to the corner of the bottom floor of the library. The renovated reading room became the activity room of the Russian Literature Society. Qi Yu knocked on the door three times, and a very soft voice came from inside and said, Please come in. The furnishings in the room are extremely simple, making the room, which is only more than 30 square meters, very empty. For long tables form a hollow square. On the left and right sides are a row of wooden bookshelves full of various books. Facing the door is a row of French window. Dark blue curtains are hung on both sides by hooks. In the corner to the right of the entrance, there is a door blocked by tables and chairs. There was only a girl sitting inside reading a book, wearing a white school uniform with short sleeves and long black hair draped over her shoulders, reflecting the golden sunlight. Wearing a school uniform with generally uncomfortable materials in this non-mandatory high school was a rare behavior, which made Gu Yuan couldn't help but glance at her twice. Just like a sculpture with beautiful facial features, each one is just right, making Gu Yuan feel amazed just by his appearance. Zifun, this is the guy I told you about. In Gu Yuan's shocked gaze, Qi Yu naturally walked over to the girl and sat down. The two of them carried the light on their backs and faced him. Gu Yuan suddenly felt a tremendous pressure. Qi Yu. Are you? Oh, I forgot to tell you. This Sifeng senior sister is my direct senior sister. We have known each other since elementary school, then middle school, and now high school. She has always been in the same school, but she is one grade higher than me. In my parents' eyes, Zifeng's senior sister has always been the target of my pursuit. Chi Yu smiled lightly, so, the only one who really wants to participate in this literary society recruitment interview is Gu Yuan. Gu Yuan didn't know what to say for a moment. Let's sit down first. Jiang Zifeng's eyelids drooped slightly, and his long eyelashes trembled in the sunlight, causing Gu Yuan to blink uncontrollably. Although the other party had a smile on their lips, Gu Yuan did not see any hint of laughter. Everything was just a polite act, and he even felt a hint of contempt. First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Jiang Zifeng, Class 1, Grade 2. Jiang Zifeng put down his book and looked up at Gu Yuan's eyes. I heard Xiao Yu say, Do you want to become a great writer? Yes. This is something I've been thinking about since I was a child, Gu Yuan nodded and replied decisively. There's nothing to hide, no matter when, having a dream is not a shameful thing. This is the idea that Gu Yuan has always insisted on. Now. It's the same. Has it changed? No. But in the first fifteen years of your life, you have shown your talents in areas other than studying, such as badminton and piano. All the awards you have won in competitions at or above the city level are only related to these two aspects. However, your attempts in literature have repeatedly encountered obstacles, and you have even failed to qualify for the new concept essay competition twice. Chi Yu told you everything, Gu Yuan took a soft breath and looked directly into Jiang Zifeng's eyes. You're right, but so what? Literature is an art, and art is extremely in need of talent. Unlike the high school and college entrance exams, people without talent cannot achieve success in art. You have been learning piano since childhood, and you should know that what I said is true. Jiang Zifeng's eyes were blazing with flames, and stars seemed to twinkle in his dark eyes. Even so, you still don't want to give up. Well, I guess so, Gu Yuan suddenly smiled. Huh, actually I know hope is slim, but I still want to give it a try. Why? Because I hope to be filled with things I love, Gu Yuan said. You passed. What are you saying? Gu Yuan was stunned for a moment and looked at the girl in front of him in surprise. What is this? What about the exam for literary knowledge? Just casually chatting a few words and passing the interview. You don't seem very happy. There's still time to refuse now. After the start of next semester, the official exit channel will also be open. Here is the exit application form, you can fill it out now, with a pen next to it. 
Jiang Zifeng took out a blank document from his desk and pushed it in front of Gu Yuan. No, no, no. Gu Yuan waved his hand repeatedly as he looked at the withdrawal application in front of him. This is the first time he has seen a club that sends a resignation application to new members without even filling out the application form. That's great, Gu Yuan. Welcome to join the Russian Literature Society and become a member of a group of high school students struggling to live a brilliant life amidst boredom. It's a great honor, but... Do you have anything else you want to ask? There's nothing left. Gu Yuan looked at Jiang Zifeng's expressionless face and forcefully swallowed the words on his lips. Russian welcomes everyone with dreams. Jiang Zifeng picked up the book on the table again and read it, as if she had read through Gu Yuan's thoughts. She took the initiative to answer, even if it's a dream with courage but no strategy, it's the same. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 Pond Fish Chi Yu you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 3 Pond Fish. Chi Yu. What are you holding? An explosive bag. After the lunch break, Gu Yuan looked surprised at the box tied in a field shape that Chi Yu had brought in from outside the classroom. After the new students entered school, it was military training, and everyone in the grade, including Chi Yu, had turned black. This made Chi Yu, who struggled to throw the box onto the table with her two slender but muscular arms, looked like a female special forces soldier, especially when she was wearing a round hat. Gu Yuan couldn't help but swallow a mouthful of water in fear. These are all my food, Chi Yu Chang sighed and lightly patted the 20 centimeter thick brown brick on the table. Whether I can succeed or not depends on it. Success. What are you doing? Gu Yuan bent down and looked at the package. Are you planning to directly kill Teacher Chen or attack the Academic Affairs Office? Are you ready to take care of everything once and for all? What are you talking about? I'm not a terrorist, Chi Yu Bai glanced at him. It's all books inside. Isn't Gorky saying that books are the ladder of human progress? These are all my spiritual nourishment. They are the key to my path to success. Book. Let me take a look. Gu Yuan took the package from Chi Yu's hand and opened the strict outer packaging with scissors. Wow, you really. What's wrong? It's nothing. I admire you a lot, Gu Yuan reached out and pushed the package back. Keep going, I will support you spiritually. Um. By the way, Gu Yuan, have you finished writing your essay? It's already Wednesday today, Chi Yu said as he neatly arranged the rules under his desk. It's still two days before submission. According to the senior in high school, teacher Chen Gu will have someone who can't finish writing come up to give a speech, which is terrifying to think about. Speaking on stage. Gu Yuan felt a thud in his heart. This was not something he was really good at. From childhood to adulthood, as long as there were many people, Gu Yuan's throat seemed to be locked and he couldn't speak. When he was young, he was praised for being obedient, sensible, and not making a fuss. Now that he grew up, he was easily suspected of having autism, but fortunately, Gu Yuan had not yet reached the age where he could be misunderstood. Oh, forget it, that kind of thing can be easily fooled by just writing it down. Gu Yuan thought about it but inexplicably, the smiling face of Chen Ji's middle-aged man appeared before his eyes, and his heart couldn't help but feel a little lost. Yeah, praising my mother to everyone on stage, um. Goosebumps have started to form on my arms, it's too embarrassing. Hey. Wait, what's this? Chi Yu let out a soft cry after putting away the last book and Gu Yuan followed the sound to find a flat square iron box at the bottom of the packaging paper. No wonder this thing is so heavy. Gu Yuan said softly. What is this? I remember I didn't buy this at the book bar, did I? Chi Yu shook the box with both hands and placed it in his ear, inside which there was a loud noise. Strange, is it a gift that costs over 200 yuan? Is there no label on the lid? 
Gu Yuan glanced at the colored paper pasted on the edge of the iron box and said, Happy loving. Hey, you didn't buy anything strange, did you? I can remind you that this is a classroom, a public place. Be careful not to cause social death directly after opening the box. However, Qi Yu's personality did not allow her to have any hesitation. Before Gu Yuan finished speaking, she opened the box. Love Tarot Card Wow, it looks very interesting. Gu Yuan, here is the manual. Do you want me to calculate it for you? Why are you so interested in everything? I can tell you, tarot cards are listed as prohibited items in Chapter 3 of the Student Handbook. There are not many things that can be banned in this school, and every one caught is enough for you to drink a pot. Spread feudal superstition, be careful not to be caught by teachers in the Moral Education Department for ideological reform. No, no, just play around. Come on, draw a card. Chi Yu lined up those pink cards on the table, hurry up, the teacher should come later. Dot. Hurry up, Chi Yu's expression changed instantly. Okay, this card. Gu Yuan chose to surrender to the Sichuan Opera face changing master Chi Yu and flipped the card closest to his hand. Let me take a look at this one. Chi Yu picked up the manual and flipped through it page by page, occasionally scrutinizing the card that Gu Yuan had drawn. This one is. Lover. Lover. What does it mean? Lover's cards are usually related to love, but the more common meaning of this card is choice. The appearance of lover's cards often indicates that the parties are facing significant decisions. At this time, the parties must be extra cautious as the decisions they make may have a significant impact on them. Isn't this equivalent to not saying anything? Of course, making major decisions requires extra caution. For example, I am currently thinking about what to eat for dinner, and whether to go to the first or second floor of the cafeteria requires careful consideration. Hmm it's boring. As class was about to start, Chi Yu put those tarot cards back in the box and put them away. He took out his physics textbook and pen. Here we conduct a force analysis on the motion process of sailboats, and it can be seen that this is a nonlinear variable speed motion. Therefore, we consider the finite element method and assume a delta x, where delta x is a small quantity. It's also about mechanics. At the beginning of the school year, Gu Yuan chose a physics competition. The capable woman with curly hair on stage is his physics teacher. The woman who reportedly scored full marks in the entrance exam is like a myth in this high school, and listening to her classes is considered a pleasure by many students. But Gu Yuan's thoughts drifted in another direction during the force analysis of this mythological figure. He still paid some attention to Qi Yu's recent divination results, such as lovers and love, which made him unable to help but imagine. At a military training evening more than half a month ago, a girl's dance left a deep impression on him, as graceful as a startled swan, as graceful as a wandering dragon, as graceful as a light cloud covering the moon, as floating as a flowing wind returning to snow. Chao Zhi's Luo Shen Fu is perfect for describing her. Compared to that, the pianist's score performance was very boring, even a bit noisy. Gu Yuan didn't hesitate to use the harshest words to describe that guy's performance, although he knew his level wouldn't be much higher than the other person, he just couldn't restrain his thoughts. At that time, my attention was not focused on the host, so much so that I didn't even hear which class and what their name was. This is the most regrettable thing for Gu Yuan in the past half month. If only the divination of this tarot card was true. A thought drifted through Gu Yuan's mind. Chi Yu suddenly pushed him. Hmm. Teacher Li called you, Chi Yu said softly. Gu Yuan, can you tell me how to write the integral formula here? The mythological figure looked at him with bright and hopeful eyes. Um. Gu Yuan looked at the blackboard and fell into contemplation. In an instant, a large number of formulas and theorems drifted through his mind, but thirty seconds of distraction was enough to make him completely unable to keep up with the pace of mythological characters. I don't know, Gu Yuan said honestly. 
Sit down and listen attentively. Chi Yu, you answer. Teacher Lee cleared his throat, but didn't bother him much. Hey, what's wrong with you? You're absent thought minded. After answering the question, Chi Yu covered his mouth with his right hand and whispered, Today is Thursday. There will be a quiz during the evening self. Study, which will test the content taught in class during the day. If you don't listen now, it will be over by then. I will watch it during my lunch self. Study, so don't worry. Gu Yuan sighed lightly and dragged his thoughts back from a distant place to the physics class. Shouldn't you be thinking about the divination just now? Do you have a crush? Listen carefully to my class, and I will remind you in the name of the study committee to pay attention to classroom discipline. Oh, put on airs, right? Sigh. Then the information about the girl dancing at the party that I finally found out had to be thrown into the trash can like this. Chi Yu slowly rubbed a note in his palm, with his right hand facing Gu Yuan's eyes. Cough. Cough. Gu Yuan quickly coughed. Chi Yu opened the lid of the water cup and poured some cold water on his left index finger. I surrender. Gu Yuan grabbed Chi Yu's left wrist before her wet fingers touched the note. Tell me, what conditions are there? Give me a month's worth of snacks, and as long as I go to the school supermarket, you have to swipe my card. A month. Are you robbing? Do you think I'm a money printer? It's okay if it doesn't work, anyway, it doesn't matter. Chi Yu's finger reached out to the note again. Stop, for a week, I'll cover all your expenses at the school supermarket. Two weeks. Deal. The two finally reached an agreement and the bell for the end of class rang in time. After the mythological figure teacher Lee walked out of the classroom, Chi Yu contentedly stuffed the note into Gu Yuan's hand. Gu Yuan opened it and saw only six short words inside. Class 13, Grade 11, Chi Yu. Even the character, Yu, in Chi Yu was originally written as, fish, in a fish pond. Is that all? Why, isn't it enough? Do you insist on me giving you a complete census report? Write down everyone's surname, what they mean, where they live, who they are, and their ancestral roots. I'm your desk mate, not your matchmaker. No, there must be a penguin account or something like that, just a name and class, that's too little. Gu Yuan couldn't help but feel sorry for the balance in his campus card. Two weeks of snacks, with Chi Yu's appetite, were estimated to cost around four to five hundred yuan. He also didn't know what kind of physique this guy was. If he had eaten like this, he would have grown fat into a pig's head long ago, but Chi Yu's weight had hardly changed. Anyway, there's just so much. If you want a phone call or something, just go and ask for it yourself. It's very close, class two is next door, on the same floor as us. Chi Yu said with a pout, Chi Yu, Chi Yu, Jin Yao loves the old forest, Chi Yu thinks of the ancient abyss. You two guys have names that match quite well. Why do you still seem unhappy after spending two weeks on free snacks? It's only two weeks, not a month. Chi Yu pouted slightly. Two weeks is enough, do you think I'm an ATM machine? And even if it's an ATM machine, there's a withdrawal limit, right? Gu Yuan sighed deeply, deducting four to five hundred yuan from his monthly living expenses. His plan to buy new football shoes had to be put on hold for another period of time. Hey, so are you really planning to take the initiative to find her? I haven't figured it out yet. Cut, you have a thief's heart but not a thief's courage. What brand of weakling are you? Forget it. Gu Yuan glared at Chi Yu. This guy is quite pretty without speaking, but as soon as he spoke, Gu Yuan couldn't help but want to hammer her. By the way, class 3 is so close to us. How come I've never seen her before? There are two staircases in the teaching building, with you to the left and her to the right. With your habit of taking fewer steps and never taking more, you will never encounter her in your lifetime. So, lazy person, you won't get love, what's going on with you today? What's wrong with me? 
I already talk enough on a regular basis, but today's conversation feels more than doubled. Gu Yuan yawned, I'm tired, I need to go to bed. Are you not eating? I don't want to eat, I don't want to go to the cafeteria. Bring the card, Chi Yu saw through Gu Yuan's careful thinking at a glance. What card? Campus card. Don't play dumb, contract, contract spirit. Gu Yuan reluctantly took out the blue campus card from his pocket and handed it to Chi Yu in his palm. Okay, save some money. There's a limit. Humph, I know the password, but the limit can't stop me. Chi Yu shook his ponytail and stood up, walking towards the classroom door. If you want to use an excuse not to eat to avoid spending all day, there's no door. Watching Chi Yu's figure disappear at the end of the corridor, Gu Yuan slowly stood up and walked to the entrance of class 13 in grade 1. During lunch break, the classroom was empty, with only a few people studying and eating bread, milk, and other things. Are you sure you're not there? Hello classmate, may I ask, who are you looking for? A very clear voice came from behind, and he knew it was a sunny boy. Gu Yuan turned around to look, but the result was completely different from what he had imagined. Standing in front of him was a girl who was less than a head shorter than him, with a pair of ponytails. She was standing with her hands crossed over her waist, looking at her, her face filled with curiosity. I'm looking for. Chi Yu, the girl with two ponytails suddenly turned her body and looked up at the staircase. Someone is looking for you again. Are you looking for her, right? That's right. The girl with two ponytails patted his shoulder, looking very loyal. Good luck to you. Um. At that moment, Gu Yuan felt his head about to explode, as if there was a hair dryer that had reached the highest end blowing at his forehead, his face burning hot and hot. At this moment, a cool feeling suddenly came from Gu Yuan's wrist, and something slippery gently broke open his palm, saving his brain from burning out. Gu Yuan fixed his gaze and saw an extra note in his palm, with two contact information. Phone number and penguin number. The font was very elegant and lively. Chi Yu had already entered the classroom and sat in the first row by the window, far from the door. She turned her head to look at the noisy playground not far away. Gu Yuan silently clenched the note in his palm, as if he had grasped the unreal feeling that had just spread throughout his body. End of this chapter Chapter 4 Guidance Teacher Chen Gu You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Guidance Teacher Chen Gu, a total of 40.78 yuan. The shop assistant sister packed the items on the cashier into bags one by one, including potato chips, mentos, fish tofu, ham sausages. Gu Yuan watched as Chi Yu gently swiped his campus card in the sensor area of the card reader, and the red number suddenly changed from three digits to two digits. He couldn't help but take a deep breath. Hey, what's that expression on your face? Chi Yu pushed him with his elbow. By the way, you still haven't added that girl named Chi Yu's QQ. Not yet. Why, it's been almost a week now. Chi Yu walked on the bluestone steps outside the supermarket, stepping on the edge of the two steps, his plastic bag in his hand and his ponytail behind his head swaying. As the saying goes, soldiers are of great importance and speed. It's possible that even the yellow cauliflower will be cold when it's late. But I heard that several boys have already confessed to her. You're so slow, maybe someone will take the lead. No, why are you always so concerned about my emotional issues? Gu Yuan opened a bottle of cola with one hand, tilted his neck and took a sip, lightly hiccuping. Ahem, I have to go back to the dormitory again, so I won't be with you on the next journey. Go back to the dormitory. Hey. Wait a minute. This afternoon is the first official event of the Literary Society and also the time for the new employee interview. The guidance teacher will come. Don't forget to come. Chi Yu pouted as he watched Gu Yuan's back disappear at the entrance of the boys' dormitory, which was shaded by trees. This guy, really. 
Gu Yuan lay on the bed of dormitory 4206, looking at the upper bunk and saying it was a nap. In fact, he only had 45 minutes of rest time. Excluding the time spent eating and on the road, he could stay in the dormitory for at most 15 minutes. 10 past 12. Gu Yuan raised his hand and glanced at his watch. It took seven minutes to walk from the dormitory to the classroom. At 12.30 p.m., self.study began, which means he could still rest for about ten minutes. Chi Yu took him to the supermarket and delayed him for a while, but the problem was not serious. Taking a short break was still enough. As soon as he closed his eyes, Gu Yuan's thoughts drifted back to the afternoon a week ago. Not to mention the reckless double ponytail, just Chi Yu's behavior left him puzzled. He voluntarily handed over a note with contact information, which could be considered a way out. Is it a well-intentioned expression or does it have any other meaning? The question is, is the contact information on that note trustworthy? Chi Yu said that several boys have already confessed to her. This phone number and penguin number may not belong to one of those boys, right? No, I don't think so. That handwriting doesn't look like it's from a boy, so is it really written by Chi Yu herself? Hey, Feng Zichio, do you think any girls will take the initiative to put their contact information into your hands? Gu Yuan glanced at the boy who walked in from the door, naked in his upper body. He was 1.83 meters tall with eight abdominal muscles, shining brightly in the sunlight. Hmm. What's wrong? Have you received the love letter? Feng Zichio took out an apple from the drawer, placed it under the faucet, and briefly flushed it, biting it with a click, and said vaguely. A love letter. Shouldn't be counted, it's just a note with only contact information and no name on it. Isn't it a love letter? I don't think so. If I really like it, there might be some other text on it besides my contact information. But I'm not sure, after all, I don't have much experience in such things. You haven't had any experience yet. So what was the pink letter in your desk after we came back from the playground yesterday? Gu Yuan rolled his eyes at the silly smiling boy lying in bed. According to Chi Yu, Feng Zichio has been a remarkable presence among girls since childhood. However, this guy is like a rock, and all love letters are only collected without showing interest in any girl. This description made Gu Yuan doubt Feng Zichio's sexual orientation for a while, but as we spent more time together, Gu Yuan felt that perhaps it was just that he was a bit too masculine. Feng Zichio can't help, and his own problems can only be solved by himself, so. Should we add this penguin account or not? Gu Yuan once again fell into a dilemma. He has not yet become narcissistic enough to believe that a girl like Chi Yu would fall in love at first sight with someone like him who has never participated in any performance activities. That's not narcissism anymore, it's foolishness. The most likely explanation is that she already had a crush on someone, so she wrote the note early. However, at that time, the situation was too awkward, so she kindly helped herself out of the encirclement. Sai, Gu Yuan sighed lightly, shouldn't it be Qi Yusi Gu Yuan? Tao Yuan Ming, do you understand? After the afternoon class ended, Gu Yuan and Qi Yu went to the activity room of the literary society together. Jiang Zifeng waited inside early, still sitting in the window seat with backlight reading, her long black hair fluttering in the wind. Unlike last time, there were two more boys sitting next to her, one on the left and one on the right, one fat and one thin, just like the fat and thin fairy child in mythology guarding the fairy who came to visit the world. The skinny one is named Zhang Tianchen, and the chubby one is named Jin Lin. They are both members of the same term as Jiang Zifeng. They are now the vice president and responsible for organizing the daily activities of the literary society. The recruitment this time mainly involves the two of them working hard. Gu Yuan, Qi Yu, you're here. Zhang Tianchen greeted them with a smile, choose a seat on either side as you please. Except for the ones facing purple maple that need to be vacated, everything else doesn't matter. Senior Tianchen, who have submitted the application for joining the society. Are there many? 
Chi Yu asked after taking his seat. Not too many, about twenty. Mainly because Sister Zifeng adheres to the principle of governing by inaction, we don't have much time to promote it. If it's people who are interested in literature, they will naturally come to them. If I were solely responsible for recruiting new employees, I wouldn't even have promotional posters. Jiang Zifen reached out and brushed off the hair that stood in front of her. Even if it's not possible to hire a member, I don't care. There are already enough people in Russian. If you don't even make promotional posters, how can newcomers who want to join the company find this place? Gu Yuan murmured a word in his heart, and the school stipulated that the number of clubs should not be less than five, or they would be forcibly dissolved by the moral education department. Including him and Chi Yu, the total number of people present here is only exactly five. Is this what Jiang Zifeng called, enough people? Does not being forcibly dissolved count as success? When Gu Yuan thought of this, he couldn't help but swallow a mouthful of water silently. He suddenly had a feeling that he had been deceived by Qi Yu and Jiang Zifeng to make up for it. Dong Dong Dong. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door. Please come in, Jiang Zifeng said softly. Oh, Qi Yu and Gu Yuan, you two are also here. A joyful voice rang out, and Gu Yuan and Qi Yu were both surprised to see the man pushing the door in. This man was none other than their homeroom teacher and Chinese teacher. Chen Gu. Teacher Chen. How did you come here? As a member of Rushan, I don't know who the club's mentor is. Suddenly, I feel the need to assign you some extra tasks to show off your presence. Chen Gu smiled slightly, pulled open Gu Yuan's diagonal chair, and sat down. He was wearing a brown windbreaker today, with his shirt and tie exposed, and a cup of milk-flavored coffee in his right hand, looking very leisurely. Gu Yuan and Qi Yu exchanged a glance and saw the helplessness in each other's eyes. The homeroom teacher, as a club instructor, may not have turned the literary society into a classroom for writing classes. Don't worry, I don't usually come here. If you want to find me, you have to come to the office. Chen Gu took a sip of coffee and immediately added a circle of milk powder on the corner of his mouth. Judging the life of someone in their teens with a thirty-year-old perspective, I know it's not pleasing and I won't do it. But today is the recruitment interview, and according to the regulations of the Moral Education Department, the guidance teacher must be present, so I have to come. Teacher Chen Gu only became the club activity instructor for Russian this year, not him before, said Jiang Zifeng. My previous mentor was Sister Zifeng's grandfather, but he retired last year, Chi Yu whispered in Gu Yuan's ear. It's done. Although Chen Gu has only been with our school for three years, he is known for being strict outside. With him, our activities will definitely be restricted everywhere. Speak ill of me in front of others, Chi Yu. Chen Gu said, brushing his phone with a coffee cup and not looking up. I'm sorry, Teacher Chen. I was wrong. Chi Yu immediately clasped his hands and lowered his head to the man, lying on the table. Let's not do it again. Chen Gu took another sip of coffee. Dot. Gu Yuan measured the distance between the two with his gaze. The 45-degree diagonal angle formed by the two long tables was about 5 meters long. Chi Yu's voice was so low that it sounded like a mosquito barking. How did this guy hear it? Following the wind ear. Shua. Chi Yu handed over a note, and Gu Yuan lowered his head, his eyelids twitching. It is said that if you are still a virgin at the age of thirty, you will become a wizard. At the end of this line of text, there is also an arrow pointing diagonally to Chin Gu. After doing something bad, remember to destroy the evidence, otherwise you will suffer if caught by the police. That man once again mastered everything without lifting his head. Qian Li Ai and Shun Feng Yir. From this moment on, Gu Yuan couldn't help but believe that Chen Gu was a magician. Being observant and listening in all directions is a necessary cultivation for a qualified homeroom teacher. Chen Gu slowly sat up and said, In the days to come, you will gradually get used to me everywhere. All right, 
let's welcome the first new student to interview. Dong Dong Dong. As if to confirm his superpowers, there was a timely knocking outside the door. End of this chapter. Chapter 5. New Members and Emotional Column. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 5 New Members and Emotional Column, Sai. I gave up, Chiyu, I'll rely on you this time too. In the activity room of the Literary Society, Gu Yuan finally lowered his head in front of the drawing board in his hand. In the past decade or so of his life, there were two things that he had never been able to conquer, one of which was painting. Hey! What are you painting? Chi Yu turned his head and glanced over, his eyebrows, eyes, and nose immediately wrinkled. Are you the reincarnation of Picasso? In front of the two of them was a portrait with misaligned facial features, because the homework for this art class was to draw a self-portrait of himself. However, despite putting in a lot of effort, Gu Yuan could not control the direction of the lines drawn by the brush in his hand, as if the brush had its own ideas. He insisted on turning to the right when it was time to turn left, and shaking down when it was time to move up. He was like a rebellious child. Whatever, I'll leave this assignment to you. Gu Yuan clasped his hands and lowered his head towards Qi Yu. To be honest, being able to paint like this ghost, to some extent, you are also very talented. Qi Yu turned his hand and threw the picture quality of the abstract masterpiece into the waste paper basket, okay, it's wrapped around me. Hey! Why did you agree so decisively this time? You completely lost the demeanor of a blackmail criminal before, and suddenly changed your personality. Chi Yu tilted his eyes and said, Oh. What, you want to pay tribute? No, no, no. Gu Yuan immediately waved his hand, still thinking about the upcoming 3A masterpiece on Steam. At such times, saving a little is just a little bit. Shit, don't worry. I've been losing weight lately and I'm not very interested in snacks. Chi Yu pursed his lips and gently shook his hair. It was only then that Gu Yuan noticed that Chi Yu, who never likes to dress up and look plain, was wearing a small pink hair clip, shining brightly in the sunlight. Combined with the long plain silk dress this guy is wearing today, as well as the carefully selected small leather shoes, did she have some careful thinking of her own. Hey, what are you doing? Nothing. Nothing. Gu Yuan immediately averted his gaze. In his eyes, Qi Yu was a strange creature without gender, and in his eyes, he was also similar. No matter what Qi Yu dressed up, it had nothing to do with him. Speaking of which, how are you and Qi Yu doing? There hasn't been much progress, and after adding friends, there hasn't been much talk. Gu Yuan recalled the scene on Saturday night when he entered that string of numbers in the search bar with a nervous heart and hesitated whether to continue with the pop.up avatar. Then I remembered the good morning message I posted a few hours after dawn in the line, we're already friends, come chat together now. And the morning reply from Chi Yu after half an hour. Sai, Gu Yuan really wanted to slap himself to death the night before yesterday. Well. That's a bit strange. A hint of doubt flashed in Chi Yu's eyes. Gu Yuan was about to ask something, but just then Jiang Zifeng pushed open the door and walked in. Ha, huh, you guys have already arrived, it's very early. Sister Zifeng. Chi Yu and Gu Yuan greeted her together. Today, Jiang Zifeng changed her outfit, wearing an indigo long dress paired with a yellow vest, lined with a white shirt. Her long hair was tied into a waist-length single ponytail, her hands crossed in front of her chest, and she held a blue cardboard pad. I called you here today mainly for the new column. Jiang Zifeng opened the chair in the center by the window and sat down, which was her exclusive seat. She seemed to particularly enjoy the feeling of sunlight shining on her back. In order to meet the needs of the majority of students, the Moral Education Department has decided to allow us to open a new column on the basis of our annual school magazine. Apart from financial restrictions, there are almost no requirements, and the degree of freedom is very high. Gu Yuan bit his lips lightly. 
No wonder Jiang Zifeng came to the classroom this morning to ask them to come to the activity room after the afternoon class ended. Originally, there was a task to assign, but the new column, new column. What specific content is it about? Chi Yu asked. Because teacher Chen Gu needs to collaborate with the psychological society, the direction of this new column is tentatively set as the emotional column. Dot. Emotional column. Hey, although the school does not prohibit dating, and the school leaders have always had a blind eye attitude towards student couples, opening an emotional column directly is a bit too jumping, isn't it? After listening to Jiang Zifeng's words, Gu Yuan couldn't help but be taken aback for a moment. This is too brave. Anyway, the overall environment of this country still does not support high school students in love. Who told you that the emotional column must be about love issues? A heavy object suddenly fell on Gu Yuan's shoulder. He turned his head and bumped into teacher Chen Ji's face, which startled him. Damn it, when did he come in? Gu Yuan couldn't help but recall the sentence this man said here last time. You will gradually get used to me everywhere. The young man held his shoulder with one hand and Chi Yu's with the other, smiling as he looked at a piece of paper slowly falling from the sky on the table. Give me a good look, the requirements of the column, he said have you ever engaged in any of the following behaviors. Day after day in school or work, when faced with difficulties, your heart is full of ups and downs, and you struggle fiercely. In the end, you can't say a word. Therefore, in your leisure time, you will also reminisce about your childhood and past. After reminiscing, you will mock your past immaturity, but you can only sigh at the powerlessness in front of you. In daily life, when you encounter the person or thing you like, you are only willing to take the initiative and not strive for it. When you are alone, you also have the desire to pile up some beautiful things, but in the end, you always give up because you feel very far away. If you have any, please feel free to contribute. We will do our best to help you get rid of your difficulties. The new column of Russian Literature Society. Huzhong Ryu is now open to all students and teachers from Nanhua High School for submissions. Um. Gu Yuan and Qi Yu fell into silence at the same time. The scope does not only include emotional issues related to love, but. Where is this all related to? I spent a lot of time getting the approval from the Moral Education Department to open an emotional column. Work hard and strive to make it a permanent column. Chen Gu patted both of them on the shoulder, then turned around and walked towards the door of the activity room. He also picked up the mug placed on the redwood desk at the door and took a sip lightly. I still know how to do it, let's go first. Jiang Zifeng, I'll leave it to you. Okay, Teacher Chen Gu. Jiang Zifeng tapped the table lightly with his index finger, pulling the attention of Gu Yuan and Qi Yu, who were a bit stunned, back to her. In order to keep this column going, we must collect enough submissions for the next three months of this semester. If it cannot be published, the plan for this column will have to be forced to stop. Stop it, stop it. Before Gu Yuan could speak, Jiang Zifeng's next sentence blocked his mouth. However, I won't allow such a thing to happen. So, if you haven't gathered enough 10 drafts of no less than 2,000 words by the deadline, which is December 10th, the art festival, then the rest will have to be completed by yourself. Ah. Do you do it yourself? Well, no one has submitted the manuscript, so we'll have to let you write it yourself. Two people, 10 drafts, one with 2,000 words. Gu Yuan shook his fingers and couldn't help but feel a thud in his heart. Not only you two, but also the new members who joined through the interview last time will have one transferred to your task group, and the rest will prepare the school magazine with me, Jiang Zifeng chuckled lightly. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me at any time. New Members Gu Yuan blinked his eyes. The last interview process could be said to have been unbearable. Although there were even people who Gu Yuan thought were excellent, under the continuous questioning of teacher Chen Gu and senior sister Jiang Zifeng, only three of the more than twenty new interviewees successfully passed the test. They were Feng Zichou, who was in the same class as them, Lu Qingxi, 
who was in class 3 with Qi Yu, and Chen Ning, who was in class 11. Feng Zixiu and Lu Qingxi were able to pass the interview, and Gu Yuan was not surprised because Feng Zixiu had a different kind of persistence in poetry. After reading a large number of ancient and modern poetry collections, he was considered a wealthy scholar. Lu Qingxi, on the other hand, was a writing genius who was famous throughout the city during his junior high school years. It would be strange if such a person could not pass the literary society's interview. However, Chen Ying's ability to pass was somewhat surprising to Gu Yuan. She was neither a poet like Feng Zixiu nor someone like Lu Qingxi who could write, a pillow full of moldy dreams, a dream full of an impossible life, at the age of 13. She is not a genius student like them who was admitted to the best high school in the city without the need for a high school entrance exam, nor is she a hardworking elite who has undergone 20 days of repeated testing and screening. She is just an ordinary person who is not very attractive in all aspects. But under the repeated questioning from teacher Chen Gu and senior sister Jiang Zifeng, she answered fluently and showed a high level of enthusiasm for writing. Gu Yuan remembers that when Chen Ning expressed her dream as a writer, there was a glimmer in her eyes. Well, Zichou will assist you in collecting materials. Jiang Zifeng smiled slightly and turned his gaze to Qi Yu. Xiao Yu, do you have any objections? No, Qi Yu nodded quickly like a sparrow. That's good, Gu Yuan. What about you? I don't have either. Okay, it's almost time. You can go now. Jiang Zifeng leaned back and leaned against the back of her chair. The gentle breeze brushed against the strands of green silk floating in front of her forehead. Not far behind was the lively playground. Men and women chasing each other were everywhere on the football field, basketball court, and runway. A warm and noisy voice came from her. Seize the time and wish you good luck. End of this chapter. Chapter 6 The Boy with No Existence You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 The Boy with No Existence The next afternoon, the math teacher was teaching a very cute mean inequality on the podium. Gu Yuan was writing and drawing with a pen on a draft paper, completely unaware of the impending danger. A pigeon quietly stopped by the window, peeking into the classroom. A pair of small, shiny black eyes quickly locked onto the target. It stared at the half-eaten bread on Gu Yuan's table. The fragrance of meat floss and butter overcame its natural fear of these bipedal upright animals. The saying that birds die for food is not just empty talk, but a well-founded saying. With a sharp thud, Gu Yuan's cheek was hit by a series of vibrations from the pigeon's wings. Before he could react, the bread had become the object of the bird's hand with only grey-purple feathers. Everyone's eyes aligned with Gu Yuan, including the math teacher in his fifties on stage. Pop! Gently blowing away the pigeon feathers draped over the hair in front of the forehead, unsure of what to respond to, he awkwardly shifted his gaze to the blackboard filled with calculation formulas, maintaining a state of seemingly listening attentively. After a brief silence, the classroom burst into thunderous laughter. With pursed lips and squinted eyes, Gu Yuan looked around at his classmates who were laughing like thunder, and let out a soft sigh. Sure enough, regardless of their IQ, teenagers of this age have similar laughter points. Hey, Gu Yuan, look at him. Suddenly, Qi Yu pinched his thigh hard and then pointed his finger towards the corner of the window in the first row of the classroom. Hmm. Gu Yuan looked in the direction pointed by Qi Yu and found that among the laughing classmates, there was one person whose expression remained unchanged. His name is Li Ran, a boy with almost no presence. From early enrollment to centralized summer training, and now to the late September after formal enrollment, Li Ran has been with them for nearly five months. However, in such a long time, Gu Yuan and Li Ran have said no more than five words, namely, hello, goodbye, thank you, and good morning. Cough cough. Quiet, let's continue with class. Gu Yuan, close the window. Math teacher Zhou Ming knocked on the blackboard with a half-meter long wooden ruler, 
and the classroom immediately fell silent, like a peaceful ancient well. Li Ran's expression remained unchanged, and Gu Yuan noticed that his gaze had not even moved with teacher Zhou Ming's triangle ruler, and there was no decent focus. Qi Yu clearly noticed this too, so much so that her left thumb and index finger were about to twist off Gu Yuan's thigh flesh, and the excitement on her face could hardly be concealed. Material. Material. Gu Yuan. Let's go talk to him after class. Qi Yu picked up a pen with his right hand and wrote a flowing string of text on the draft book, then pushed it onto Gu Yuan's desk. Pop pop pop. Gu Yuan clenched his teeth and endured the pain, patting Qi Yu's left hand repeatedly. Finally, before his face turned red into a pig's head, he made her realize and let go of the finger that was twisting his thigh. Who? Gu Yuanchang let out a sigh, picked up a pen, wrote two words in his notebook, and then pushed it back. I won't go. Gu Yuan doesn't think this would be such a valuable material. In this class, there are many strange and peculiar people, and each person has some quirks to some extent, even himself or Qi Yu. Li Ran may just have a more solitary personality. There's nothing to be alarmed about. Why? Although Qi Yu didn't speak, looking at those innocent big eyes, Gu Yuan seemed to hear her voice. With a light sigh, Gu Yuan wrote two paragraphs on the draft paper and pushed them to Qi Yu's side. Firstly, there are times when a person may feel unhappy, and there are always a few days in a month when they may look down. Li Ran is likely in this state. Secondly, it is impolite and foolish to take the initiative to touch someone else's mold even though they know they are unhappy now. Quickly, the draft paper was pushed back by Qi Yu. Gu Yuan raised his eyebrows and saw that it read. Firstly, my intuition tells me that Li Ran would never have been in a low mood because of her uncle's visit, and there must be some hidden truth behind this. Secondly, you are foolish. After the second sentence, I also used an automatic pencil to draw a little pig with a steaming head. Hey, wait a minute. I just said not to ask Li Ran directly, but I didn't say not to investigate. After class, Gu Yuan grabbed Qi Yu's wrist and without saying a word, the girl wanted to stand up and walk directly in the direction of Li Ran. Hmm. So what do you think we should do? Firstly, it is necessary to confirm whether the reason for Li Ran's current state is due to intermittent depression caused by endocrine disorders or other deeper reasons. It's not easy, just go ask him why he's unhappy. Wait a minute, why are you so anxious? Gu Yuan's head was covered in black lines. Coincidentally, his gaze turned and he noticed that Feng Zichio in the back row was staring at him intently, so he immediately waved to him. Zichio, come and discuss something with you. What's wrong, Brother Yuan? I've been looking at you all, and I feel like something hasn't been right with you since class started. Harm, it's actually about materials. Do you remember the task assigned to us by senior sister Jiang Zifeng yesterday? Teacher Chen Gu has opened a new column called Huzhong Ryu, which mainly writes student stories and is actually an emotional column. I know, it's the column that you have to write yourself if you don't receive submissions, Zichio's face showed sympathy. Is there anything I can help with? No need, we will solve it ourselves. Qi Yu suddenly interjected, and Gu Yuan glanced at her with some surprise. He noticed that the girl's expression seemed to be a bit off, as if he wasn't very happy with his request for Feng Zichio's help. He sat there flipping through his Chinese textbook and didn't speak. Hey, don't pay attention to her, Zichio. How is your relationship with Li Ran? Li Ran. Not very familiar, he doesn't seem to be very talkative, Feng Zichio tilted his head for a moment before answering. However, if you want to get to know him better, I think you can ask his roommates. Roommate. Which dormitory does he live in? Gu Yuan rubbed his chin and asked acquaintances to inquire, which was a good plan. Wait. I'll go back and check the dormitory registration form. Well, it's 4207. The people in the same dormitory are Yin Tian, Lu Mufeng, and Zhang Xiao. 
4207 Gu Yuan couldn't help but be slightly stunned upon hearing this. His dormitory is 4206, which means Li Ran lives next door to him. But why have you been living in the dormitory for several months, yet it seems like you have never seen Li Ran in the dormitory building before? Gale. Follow my command. Ah. 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 A pure and skinny boy and a tall and skinny boy screamed and twisted in strange words. It was none other than Yin Tian and Tao Yixer. Gu Yuan and Feng Zichio pondered for a moment, but still interrupted their seemingly intense game. Yin Tian, Tao Yixer, I have a question for you. Hmm. What's wrong, Brother Yuan? Yin Tian pulled his head out from under the thin and tall arm of Zhang Xiao. His fair face had a slight blush caused by friction and heat, and his tongue was slightly stuck out of his mouth, like a dog doing when dissipating heat. No wonder he had a nickname called Yin Dog. Li Ran doesn't seem to be very happy lately, has something happened? Li Ran. Who is Li Ran? Puma, do you know who that is? Yin Tian looked at the tall and thin person under him. Tao Yixer's nickname was Puma, which originated from a text in the new concept English textbook called A Puma at Large, and Tao Yixer equals Escaping Puma. Although Gu Yuan felt it was a bit far-fetched, and Tao Yixer seemed to be directly equated with the ceramic artist rather than the escaping American lion, this is indeed the origin of this nickname. Ah! Who? Tao Yixer also raised her head, but she also looked confused. No, no, Li Ran is your roommate. Don't you all know that? Zichio looked at the dormitory registration form and exclaimed incredulously, or do you even know that this person is in our class? Ah. Roommate. Is that right? Puma, do we have such a roommate? I don't know, I don't remember. How do I feel like I've never seen him in the dormitory? Tao Yixer looked confused. Oh. No, I remember. Does he live in bed number four, the one by the window? Um. According to the registration form, it should be. Feng Zichio looked at the dormitory form in his hand, Li Rant's bed is the fourth bed. That's right, but he hardly ever goes back to the dormitory, especially recently, he only comes back after turning off the lights. Yesterday, when I heard the sound of climbing the bed, I even looked at my watch and it looked like around 10.30. 10.30, didn't the door to the dormitory area close at 10.15? How did he get in? Gu Yuan frowned slightly. I don't know about that. Anyway, when he woke up at 6 in the morning, he was no longer in the dormitory, and I don't know where he went. Okay, thank you, come on. Gu Yuan threw a fruit candy to each of them. At that moment, the bell for class rang, and everyone returned to their seats. As soon as he sat down, Chi Yu stomped on his right foot hard. Hiss. Gu Yuan took a cold breath and turned his head to see that this guy's upper body remained motionless, with a calm expression on his face. He seemed to be focused on the text and didn't look like he had just stepped on a person's toe. Gu Yuan, what's wrong? It's okay, it's okay. Facing the curious gaze cast by teacher Chen Gu, Gu Yuan quickly shook his head. Then, as Chen Ji's attention shifted to the blackboard, Gu Yuan pretended to bend down and went to the table to look for something, whispering to Chi Yu. Hey, what's going on with you? How did I recruit you? Humph. Another kick. Forget it, I can't provoke you. Gu Yuan quietly moved his numb right foot and then breathed a sigh of relief as he faced the osmanthus tree outside the window. Compared to Chi Yu's nameless fire, he cares more about Li Ran. A normal high school student will never lower their sense of existence to the point where even roommates in the dormitory cannot detect it. In other words, the indifference he shows is definitely not intermittent depression caused by endocrine disorders, but there is another hidden truth. End of this chapter. Chapter 7. Gu Yuan's Last Walk. You are listening at novelfull.audio.
Chapter 7 Gu Yuan's Last Walk After finishing self.study in the evening, Gu Yuan did not directly join the vast crowd as usual. Instead, he was bored and flipped through the complete interpretation of Wang Hoxiong's textbook in his hand. This auxiliary book has always been disliked by the top teachers in the class, but it is quite suitable for Gu Yuan, who used to have no foundation in subject Olympic competitions. It was this book, Queen Xiong, that helped him break free from the predicament of getting 19 points on his first math exam and crossed the threshold of passing a week later. The math teacher who requires first.Your high school students to use derivatives and trigonometric sum difference product formulas is simply a devil. Although there will be the math weekly exam tomorrow afternoon, at this moment, Gu Yuan's attention is not on the colorful pages, but silently turns to Li Ran in the far corner of the front row of the classroom. Li Ran was holding a black signing pen in his hand, writing and drawing on a blank draft paper. Although it was difficult to see what he was actually writing from a distance, Gu Yuan could judge with his rich experience in doodling that it was definitely not a meaningful mathematical formula, but a casual doodle. When the people in the classroom were halfway through, Li Ran suddenly stood up, inserted his hands into his pockets, and quickly walked out of the classroom door. Gu Yuan immediately followed up. As soon as he arrived downstairs, he noticed something unusual. Li Ran was walking in a different direction from the student army. He didn't walk up the avenue leading to the dormitory building or the night snack cafeteria, but instead turned to the central garden on the other side. Behind the central garden, that was where the art building was located. Gu Yuan followed Li Ran not far or close, about 20 meters behind him. He couldn't help but feel a bit strange in his heart. The art building is where the art classroom, music classroom, and many activity rooms of art clubs are located. Why did Li Ran walk here? The deeper you go, the fewer people there are. At this time, it was almost October weather, and the central garden was fragrant with golden osmanthus. A thick layer of golden osmanthus petals fell on the soft grass. After following for a short while, Gu Yuan saw no one around. In order to minimize the sound of footsteps and avoid being noticed, he stepped on the grass covered with petals. Under the cover of the bushes, Gu Yuan cautiously walked through the garden path, following behind Li Ran from a distance. Standing in the shadow of Osmanthus branches and leaves, Gu Yuan couldn't help feeling a little uneasy. He didn't know why. Although he had followed him out of concern for his classmates, he always felt like he was doing something really bad, feeling guilty and guilty. Crouching on the grass, Gu Yuan saw Li Ran turning left and right in the dark corridor with the lights off, through the gap between two trimmed shrubs that looked like ice cream balls, and finally disappeared into the darkness at the end corner. Gu Yuan frowned and quickly stood up, wanting to keep up. However, just then, his right hand suddenly touched something warm. He was startled and turned his head to see a hand stretched out from the nearby bushes. What kind of person? Without hesitation, Gu Yuan forcefully clasped his wrist with his backhand, only to find that the other person's arm was as slippery as oil. He followed his arm upwards, then grabbed his arm and twisted it outwards. Aikido Gu Yuan immediately recognized it as a joint technique in jutsu, and then lifted his right foot to kick forward. With a loud bang, the front end of his calf seemed to hit something hard and bounced back. Catcher A familiar voice came from the grass, Brother Yuan. Why are you? Zichio Gu Yuan couldn't help but be taken aback when he heard this. He reached out and pushed open the bushes, and what caught his eye was indeed the sculptural three-dot-dimensional face. Ha! Huh. It startled me. I thought it was who, so it was you. Why are you here? I remember you headed towards the cafeteria, didn't you? Let me see what Li Ran really wants to do, Zichio said with a silly smile as she touched the back of her head. When I reached the intersection, I took a turn and ran all the way back from behind the playground along the wall. I didn't expect to bump into you so coincidentally. I see, I'm the same. Gu Yuan couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief as he almost got into a fight with someone in the grass late at night. 
This happened more than a year ago and is one of the few bad memories in his life. Since it's you, it's okay. Let's go and follow up and take a look. Okay. The two quietly dug out the bushes, walked through the corridor, and walked lightly towards the direction where Li Ran had just disappeared. Except for the slightly closed door of the new concept watercolor painting experience room on the southeast side of the first floor, all other classroom doors are closed and locked. Gu Yuan and Feng Zichio exchanged glances. It seems that's where it is. But what is Li Ran doing in this place at this time? Are you here to draw? Just as Gu Yuan's hand was about to touch the copper door handle, his shoulder was suddenly grabbed by someone. The person was incredibly fast, and he didn't even have time to take any resistance measures. He was dragged into the grass behind him. As soon as Gu Yuan stepped on the lawn covered in tiny asmanthus petals, he immediately grabbed the wrist of his arm with one hand and grabbed his shoulder with the other, twisting and flipping the person's entire body. Meanwhile, Feng Zichio on the other side was also doing the same thing. Hey, hey, you two, let go quickly. The person had twisted facial features and a fierce expression, as if someone had pinched their nose and poured ten pounds of aged vinegar into their mouth. They were extremely sour. At this moment, they lowered their voice and screamed repeatedly. For some reason, they looked somewhat like Gibbons being caught by a caretaker but I could still vaguely see a familiar face. This person was none other than their homeroom teacher Chen Gu. Gu Yuan and Feng Zichio immediately let go of their hands. Teacher Chen. Why are you? Shu. Chen Gu raised his index finger and made a gesture of silence. Then he pointed and opened the door of the watercolor painting experience room, whispering, Gu Yuan, go and take a look. Be gentle and don't be caught. Gu Yuan nodded and cautiously touched the edge of the door, opening the crack slightly outward. From his narrow gaze, he saw Li Ran's face illuminated by an electronic screen in the dimness. Li Ran turned his back to them, and Gu Yuan couldn't quite see what was displayed on the screen. However, from the constantly changing color scene, it seemed to be some kind of exploratory web game. The watercolor painting experience room uses three-dot-dimensional touchscreen computers. Although only painting software is installed, there is no internet disconnection. Compared to the computer room that locks the door every day and the electronic reading room in the library, this is indeed a good place for surfing the internet. However, this is certainly a violation of school regulations. Just as Gu Yuan was about to open the door of the experience room further, Teacher Chen Gu reached out and pulled him away from the door. Then, he shook his head at him and Feng Zichio, pointing in the direction of the distant dormitory building, and gestured for them to follow him first. When Chen Gu arrived at the avenue, he finally let go of his voice and said in a normal voice. Gu Yuan, you're also a little too anxious. Ah. Am I? Yeah. Have you ever thought about what to say to Li Ran if you opened the door just now? Are you sure you can communicate with him normally? Also, if he just walked out the door, are you going to chase him or not? I. Gu Yuan was momentarily speechless. He had indeed not considered these issues, but was it really necessary to consider so much? Teacher Chen, what is Li Ran really doing? Feng Zichio finally couldn't help but ask. You ask Gu Yuan, didn't he see it with his own eyes? He's playing games, that's all, Gu Yuan replied to Feng Zichio's curious gaze, but this is too crazy, isn't it? Gu Yuan also enjoys playing electronic games and may even spend hundreds to buy a genuine AAA game that can only be played for over a hundred hours. However, that is only limited to Saturday afternoons, after the weekly exams, returning home from vacation, or other holidays. As for going to the school's electronic drawing room to play small games, it is definitely not within his consideration. And if, according to Yin Tian and his team, Li Ran no longer lives in the dormitory before 6 o'clock every morning, isn't it just the period after the evening self.study, and even the hour before the morning study, where Li Ran plays games? This is not just about addiction anymore, is it? 
If it's just a simple problem of addiction to online games, then I'll be much easier. Chen Gu cleared his throat and turned to walk towards the teacher's apartment. Feng Zichio, Gu Yuan, and Li Ran's problems are not so easy to solve. If you want to know more and are willing to help him, you can come to the office tomorrow noon to find me. Chen Gu sorted out the brown windbreaker that had been messed up by the two of them, and then gently twisted his shoulders on both sides. Ha! Huh. You two kids have a lot of strength. My old bones were almost torn apart by the two of you. Gu Yuan stopped and couldn't help but curl his lips, old bone. This seemingly thin and tall man dragged him and Feng Zichio into the grass with just one hand, leaving no opportunity for resistance. This is not something that an ordinary 30.year.old adult male can do. Moreover, as the two of them walked along the way, they were also careful and vigilant. They couldn't even see the corner of his clothes, which must be said to be a bit strange. The next noon, Gu Yuan and Feng Zichio arrived at Chen Ji's office. In the middle of the day, Chen Gu was the only one in the office. He sat in front of the computer holding a mug filled with coffee, staring closely at the screen, his eyebrows furrowed rare, as if in deep thought. Teacher Chen, we're here, Feng Zichio said. Oh, Zichio, Gu Yuan, you're here. Chen Gu saw them enter and immediately turned off the display screen. Gu Yuan only saw a small residual image, which seemed to be a school document. About Li Ran. Take a look at this first, Chen Gu found a piece of paper from the pile of books and lesson plans on the side. This is a self-portrait of Li Ran, given to me by teacher Lu Chang. Lu Chang is their art teacher, who has just graduated from university and has always claimed to be their sister. And that self-portrait was their first art assignment since the start of school. Gu Yuan's picture was painted by Qi Yu with his help. The two of them were stunned when they saw what was being painted on that piece of paper. There was nothing on that piece of paper, only a dry red pigment that stood out in the bright white image quality. End of this chapter. Chapter 8. Painting. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 8 Painting, What is this? Drawing. Gu Yuan thought to himself that he was already one of the more imaginative group among his peers, but after looking at it for a while, he still couldn't understand the meaning of this painting with only paint. He looked at Feng Zichio next to him and found that this guy was also looking confused. It's hard to say exactly what it is, I'll have to ask Li Ran myself to find out. However, based on my guess, it could be a puddle of blood. Chen Gu calmly took a sip of coffee from his mug and said terrifying words, when I saw this painting, teacher Lu Chang was very scared. A newly hired teacher received such a strange painting in her first class assignment, which also made her suffer. Blood. Gu Yuan was taken aback for a moment, then leaned the painting paper towards his nose. He immediately smelled a pungent smell of chemicals and couldn't help but cough twice. Gu Yuan, I told you yesterday that you are too impatient, Chen Gu chuckled lightly. Of course, it's not that this painting was painted with blood, it's just that Li Ran painted a pool of blood. Painted a puddle of blood. But isn't this a self-portrait? Feng Zichio's eyes showed a puzzled expression. Can we say that in Li Ran's eyes, he himself is a dried-up puddle of blood? Why is this? What other meaning does it have? Well, I don't know either. If you want to know about this, you can take this painting and ask teacher Lu Chang. Her office is on the third floor of the art building, near the corner of the poplar tree. Remember to knock on the door before entering. This is a necessary courtesy. Don't just walk in like two robbers when you come to me. Teacher Chen, do you know something? About Li Ran. Gu Yuan looked into Chen Ji's eyes, trying to grab something from the deep black, but he always felt like he was almost there. Chen Gu sat on the dark blue swivel chair, swaying slightly, his nose pressed against the mug, and the hot water vapor adhered to his glasses, condensing into a reflective layer of white frost. I just have some speculations, and I'm planning to find time to have a good chat with his mother. 
After all, speculations are just speculations. Spreading rumors to others before they become facts is considered spreading rumors and an extremely irresponsible behavior. Chen Gu gently waved his hand to the two of them, there are still 35 minutes left during lunch break. If you don't want to wait until evening, you should hurry up. Gu Yuan and Feng Zichio exchanged a glance, picked up the painting paper, and went straight to the office of art teacher Lu Chang. Dong Dong Dong. Before entering, I knocked on the door three times, and then a silver bell like, come in, came from inside the room. Gu Yuan pushed open the unlocked door, and in the narrow room of over ten square meters, there were four honeycomb-style office spaces arranged side by side. However, only the front two tables were occupied, from the aisle to the back two tables by the window, and the rest were piled up with various miscellaneous items. The person who just spoke was their music teacher Li Xiu, wearing a long green dress and a long, shiny black hair that looked like a model in a shampoo advertisement. He was also a young teacher who had just graduated from college. On the side of the debris pile near teacher Li Xiu, besides a box of all kinds of snacks, a half-dead chlorophytum comosum and a narcissus, the trumpet and drum of the drum horn team, there is also a red guitar and a bass. Gu Yuan glanced at the guitar slightly, and found that such a fully single-board electric guitar was relatively rare in high school. After all, there was no guitar course in school, and even if there was one, he wouldn't teach electric guitar. The strings of the piano look very bright and new, feeling like they have just been replaced. The body of the piano is single piece, and with Gu Yuan's less professional eyes, it should be peach blossom core wood. This wood has a very unique texture and a relatively soft sound. This chin is not cheap, it costs tens of thousands per piece, and usually only professional enthusiasts would choose to buy it. For example, band members. Gu Yuan's gaze couldn't help but flicker. Teacher Li Xiu appeared to be a well-behaved girl. Could it be that she even managed to join an electronic music team? Looking at the spacious space before him, Gu Yuan couldn't help but sigh in his heart. The environment of the new teacher is so good, especially when he thinks about the living environment of the six male art and music teachers upstairs, aged from 40 to 60, he can't help but feel a bit pitiful for them. Gu Yuan, Feng Zichio. Why are you here? Aren't you going to eat at this time? Li Xiyu looked at these two young boys with a curious look on their faces. Generally speaking, it is rare for people to come to the office of an art building to ask questions from teachers. Even if there are, most of them come to avoid self.study classes that require them to stay in the classroom. Those like Gu Yuan and Feng Zichio who come during their precious lunch break are simply not alone in cherishing animals. We are here to find teacher Lu Chang, Feng Zichio said politely. As soon as the words fell, Gu Yuan saw Li Xiyu pout slightly, then closed his eyes and took a big sip of the pudding milk tea in front of him, making a somewhat disappointed sound. Not so. Gu Yuan couldn't help but feel that the back of his head was a bit hot. Hmm. What can I do for you? In front of Gu Yuan and Feng Zichio, a young short-haired woman wearing black framed glasses and a suit raised her head, but her gaze kept moving towards the phone screen that was buttoned back on the table, as if an invisible thread was pulling her gaze. It can be seen that her professional ethics as a teacher are forcing her to prepare seriously to answer his and Zichio's questions. It's not a good idea to disturb others during lunch break although Gu Yuan thought so, he couldn't skip the questions he needed to ask. He glanced at Feng Zichio, who immediately took out Li Rant's drawing paper from his handbag and handed it to teacher Lu Chang. Teacher, do you still remember this drawing paper? Let me take a look. Oh, it's this one. Hey, didn't I give it to your homeroom teacher, teacher Chen Gu? How could it be in your hands? Lu Chang's big eyes showed confusion, what do you want to do? It was teacher Chen Gu who asked us to come. He said if he wanted to understand the meaning of this painting, he would come to you, Feng Zichio replied. I see. Lu Chang nodded after listening. Teacher Lu, Teacher Chen Gu said that this painting depicts a pool of blood. 
Is that so? Gu Yuan asked. Ah. If I judge from the shape and color alone, I can't think of any other possibilities. Lu Chang reached out and pushed the small and straight black framed glasses on his nose bridge. At first, I thought it was a prank from the students, after all, it's a class like yours. Gu Yuan felt that the latter half of the sentence, most of them are some strange students, had reached Lu Chang's lips, but in the end, she still forcefully swallowed it back. But later on, I carefully looked at the painting and found that the red color was actually very layered. Speaking of his expertise in the field, Lu Chang suddenly came to his senses, as if he had changed himself. If you look closely, you can see circles of halo marks, and there are also some scattered red droplets. To draw such a painting, it is not easy to paint it with just a few strokes. This technique reminded me of the blood stain drawing technique I learned when I was in school before, so I compared my previous textbooks and found that although my drawing skills seemed clumsy and immature, it should indeed be a pool of blood. Lu Chang flipped his handheld device and glanced at the screen, his expression couldn't help but twist, and then turned it off and put it aside. A 15-year-old child was able to draw such a real pool of blood and even submitted it as a self-portrait assignment, which made me feel a little scared. Gu Yuan said. Well. That's not really true, it's just strange. If it weren't for a prank, why would I have to hand in such a painting? Lu Chang leaned his head against the back of the dark blue chair and said, and the more I looked at that painting, the more lonely my spine felt, so later I handed it over to teacher Chen Gu. The feeling of loneliness with a cold spine. That's right. Lu Chang nodded, I can't guarantee it either, but personally, I think that child who was able to draw such a picture should have really seen such a pool of blood. Have you really seen such a puddle of blood? Well, that's just my opinion. I have also given this feedback to your homeroom teacher, Teacher Chen Gu. Um. Gu Yuan and Feng Zichio exchanged glances, which was probably the unconfirmed fact that Teacher Chen Gu said. Okay, thank you, teacher. Let's say goodbye first. Coming out of the office of the art building, Gu Yuan and Feng Zichio walked directly to the classroom. However, at the corner of the stairs on the fifth floor, Gu Yuan collided head dot on with Qi Yu, who was panting down the stairs. The two of them had a crisp bump on their foreheads, causing Qi Yu to fall and squat. However, Gu Yuan didn't have such good luck. The collision almost caused him to fall directly down the stairs. Fortunately, the armrest of the teaching building was of good quality, and Feng Zichio timely supported his neck, so there was no accident. Where are you going in such a hurry? Gu Yuan rubbed his forehead and reached out to Qi Yu, who was sitting on the ground, pulling her up from the ground. You have to see the way, sister. It's very dangerous for you to do this. You came just right, hurry up, come with me. Something big happened. Before Gu Yuan could recover, Qi Yu grabbed his wrist and ran downstairs. However, when he went to catch Feng Zichio's hand, he hesitated for a moment before giving up. What's the big deal? Gu Yuan asked after adjusting his body balance and running rhythm with a few small steps in a row. Oh my, it's Li Ran. He made a lot of chlorine gas in the storage room, and now there's no room for anyone in the classroom. End of this chapter. Chapter 9. Will Biomime's Dream of Electronic Sheep. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 9. Will Biomime's Dream of Electronic Sheep. With the help of the school workers and chemistry teachers brought in by Chi Yu, the yellow green gas that permeated the entire classroom was finally cleaned up before the end of the lunch break. As he sat down in the second to last seat by the window in the back row, Gu Yuan couldn't help but let out a sigh of relief. This noon was really tumultuous, but fortunately, he could go home after finishing his math week practice in the afternoon. The position behind him is the student storage room, and the boy named Li Ran created a large amount of chlorine gas in this narrow space, which is only 10 square meters and filled with books and miscellaneous items on iron shelves. Although the content was only discussed in class a few days ago, 
I didn't expect Li Ran to quickly apply what he had learned. Gu Yuan closed his eyes and silently recalled the scene at that time. Chemistry teacher Hua repeatedly emphasized with his whip at the experimental device on the projection screen that this was a dangerous experiment. If a large amount of chlorine gas was inhaled during the experiment, it could endanger life. So although there are materials in the school laboratory, students have never been allowed to conduct this experiment. Endangering life. Gu Yuan felt as if he had caught some important key information. Is this the reason why he did this? What are you saying? Chi Yu turned to look at him and asked, What's the reason? I'm thinking, why did Li Ran do this? It can't be just for fun, right? Gu Yuan's gaze fell on Li Ran's seat in the front corner. The owner of the chair had already been taken to the office of the school's moral education department by teacher Chen Gu, and he didn't know when he would be able to come back. They said that when Li Ran was discovered, he was holding a test tube with nothing left in his hand and giggling foolishly, looking quite eerie. Chi Yu lifted his bangs in front of his forehead. After yesterday, I asked someone else about Li Ran's situation and heard some rumors. Rumors. For example, Gu Yuan leaned against the window sill with his hands behind his head, watching Chi Yu raise his eyebrows and signal her to continue speaking. Li Ran seems to have always been a strange guy. Some people who claim to be from the same junior high school as him have told me a lot about his great achievements in the past, but it sounds like they have all been embellished versions. Chi Yu took out a notebook with a blue elephant on the cover from his desk as he spoke, I have taken some notes, you can take a look. What are all these things? Gu Yuan closed the notebook and returned it to Chi Yu, sighing. Based solely on these fabricated fragments, it's impossible to infer the reason why Li Ran did this. There's no way, I can't find anyone who truly knows Li Ran himself, Chi Yu shrugged. Don't you think it's strange? If Li Ran has always been a rather strange guy, then there should be many people who know him. Just like the events recorded in your notebook, any action you have done is enough to go crazy in the student circle throughout the city. So I kept saying, it's better to just ask him in person, and you don't listen to me. Chi Yu pouted, looking like an angry lamb. Ah, we'll talk later, Gu Yuan looked at the math teacher Zhou Ming who walked in with a large stack of white papers. The exam is coming. After handing in the exam papers, Gu Yuan did not pack his things and go home as usual, but went straight to teacher Chen Ji's office. He still had some things to ask about Li Ran, but on the stairs outside the office, Gu Yuan met an unexpected person. Chi Yu. The red small leather shoes, white short socks revealed the perfect ankle, a checkered skirt just above the knee, and a white shirt with three buttons tightly fastened on the chest. It was difficult for Gu Yuan's gaze to maintain a non-slanting state at this moment. Chi Yu held a large stack of math papers in her hand, indicating that she was the math class representative who came here to submit the papers. After all, the upstairs of the Chinese language office is the math office, and her appearance here is truly reasonable. But in the face of this perfectly normal encounter, Gu Yuan's feet stiffened as if they had been hit by a steel plate. He was like a robot that had cut off electricity and stopped in place, his head slightly raised, his eyes fixed on the air beside Chi Yu. Chi Yu also stopped and looked at him quietly, with a sweet smile on her lips. You. Hello. Gu Yuan forced a smile out of his face, although he couldn't see his current expression without a mirror, he could imagine that smile like a wolf grandmother. Puzzling. It seemed like she was amused by his expression, and Chi Yu suddenly burst out laughing. Then she ran up the third floor holding the test paper, leaving Gu Yuan alone. Hiss. Gu Yuan bared his teeth and took a deep breath. Thinking of his performance just now, he really wanted to dig a hole for himself and bury it directly. After knocking on the half closed door of the office and pushing it open, Gu Yuan saw Feng Zichou standing at teacher Chen Ji's desk, holding the self portrait with bloodstains in his hand, saying something. Gu Yuan, you can count it. Chen Gu waved to him as soon as he saw him come in. I just finished explaining to Zichou, 
and I happen to have something to ask you to do. What's up? Gu Yuan exclaimed in surprise. I need you to have a good conversation with Li Ran, Chen Gu said with a rare serious expression on his face. There is a generation gap between us in terms of age, and after all, there are some differences in identity. If I were to talk to him, it would probably bring him some unnecessary pressure. We. With Li Ran. Gu Yuan glanced at Feng Zichio, who nodded slightly at him, apparently agreeing. Is there any problem? Gu Yuan. That's not true. But before that, Teacher Chen, I want to know how the school is going to deal with Li Ran regarding the chlorine gas incident. Gu Yuan looked at Chen Ji's bright eyes after looking at his lenses, after all, he didn't harm anyone, so there shouldn't be a very serious punishment, right? Well. It's hard to say yet. Li Ran's behavior not only endangered public safety through dangerous methods, but also involved some other aspects. Chen Gu frowned, picked up his mug and took a sip of coffee. The door of the school chemistry laboratory is usually locked. I just received feedback from the laboratory teacher that a broken wire was found in the door lock. Li Ran should have used a similar tool to pry open the laboratory lock in order to access those dangerous materials. Crowding the lock. Gu Yuan and Feng Zichio were both surprised. I don't want to believe it either, but it's highly likely not to be wrong. Once the surveillance footage is retrieved, it will be confirmed. The heat of the coffee condensed into a layer of white mist on teacher Chen Ji's glasses. After learning about the situation with his mother, the school is also in a bit of a dilemma now. The specific punishment result will be decided after the principal's office holds a meeting. Mother. By the way, this painting. Gu Yuan pointed to the bloodstained map in Feng Zichio's hand. Teacher Lu Chang said that Li Ran must have seen such a real pool of blood before he could paint such a painting. Is there any connection between this and his behavior today? Dot. Chen Gu didn't speak, just took another sip of coffee quietly. Teacher Chen. I must respect the wishes of Li Ran and his mother herself, and it is not convenient to disclose too much at the moment. Chen Gu put the mug back on the brown porcelain plate on his desk. If you want to know, just ask Li Ran herself. He is in the small conference room next door. Seeing that Chen Gu didn't want to say anything more, Gu Yuan and Feng Zichio left the language office and went to the small conference room next to them. When Gu Yuan pushed open the door and walked in, Li Ran was sitting alone at one end of the oval-shaped table, quietly reading a book in the less bright sunlight. Can Biomime's dream of an electronic sheep? Gently closing the door, Gu Yuan pulled open the chair next to Li Ran and sat down. Philip Dick's masterpiece, Do You Really Like Science Fiction Novels? Li Ran didn't speak, just turned his head to look at Gu Yuan, and then shifted his gaze back to the book. The movie Blade Runner, adapted from this book is also very good, have you watched it? Gu Yuan tried to talk again, but still did not receive any response. He exchanged glances with Feng Zichio, who was sitting opposite him, and both felt a bit awkward. Refusing to talk was the highest form of cold violence, and there was no effective way to resolve the current awkwardness. Fortunately, after about half a minute of silence, Li Ran took the initiative to speak and break the silence. Will bionic humans dream of electronic sheep? Unexpectedly, Li Ran's voice was exceptionally clear, like a natural spring. What? Did you say this book? Gu Yuan didn't realize at first that it was a question. Will bionic humans dream of electronic sheep? Will they? Li Ran's gaze did not leave the book, but he was indeed questioning Gu Yuan and Feng Zichio. Gu Yuan was stunned for a moment. He had read this novel, and in this science fiction work full of wonderful and magnificent imagination, no one had actually asked this question, and naturally, no one had answered it. Even the author himself has not provided a standard answer. Probably. If they really can dream, Feng Zichio replied. So. Li Ran murmured. At this moment, Gu Yuan saw that there was no focus in his gaze, 
indicating that Li Ran was not actually reading this book. His mind was wandering, he was thinking about other things. We are members of the Literary Society and are currently preparing a new column that will be launched soon. Gu Yuan did not directly ask about the production of chlorine gas, but instead chose an unrelated topic. Are you interested in submitting? Literary Society Li Ran's eyes lit up slightly, but soon dimmed again. He shook his head and said, forget it. Don't you give it a try? Feng Zichio asked. No need. Li Ran stood up the book, blocking her face. Due to the obstruction, her voice suddenly became muffled. It should be school time now, isn't it? End of this chapter. Chapter 10 Car Accidents You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 Car Accidents Gu Yuan's gaze flickered and he gave Feng Zichio a wink, asking him to remain silent. Then he said to Li Ran, we have something else to do. As for you, Teacher Chen Gu just said, you can leave now. I, I don't want to go back, Li Ran's gaze drifted back to the corner of the conference room, avoiding Gu Yuan's gaze. Why? Gu Yuan felt like he had grasped the key to the problem, so he followed up further and asked, is, what happened at home? Not at all. Unexpectedly, upon hearing this question, Li Ran's tone and expression suddenly calmed down, and her gaze lightly scanned the faces of Gu Yuan and Feng Zichio. I just want to finish reading this book here before leaving. Gu Yuan lowered his head and glanced at the book in Li Ran's hand, Can Buy Mime's Dream of an Electronic Sheep. His fingers had just reached one dot third of the entire book, which means there were still nearly 100,000 words of reading. If he wanted to finish reading, he probably wouldn't be able to do it in three or four hours. However, in the next ten minutes, no matter how Gu Yuan and Feng Zichio started the conversation, Li Ran never said a single word again. Unable to do anything, Gu Yuan and Feng Zichio had to withdraw from the conference room, sigh. It seems that it's not that easy to ask a question from Li Ran's mouth. In the classroom of class 11, Gu Yuan was tidying up while turning his head to feel Feng Zichio behind him. As expected, we are not familiar with Li Ran at all. This kind of thing is urgent and can only be done slowly. Feng Zichio stuffed the books and exercise books in his desk into the sports backpack, which was over half a meter high, and directly propped it up like a stone. I saw him pull and tug with his right hand, and the heavy backpack slid onto his shoulder, securely hanging. Gu Yuan looked at the blue handbag in front of him, which contained nothing but two pretending textbooks. He couldn't help but swallow a mouthful of saliva and said, you brought so many things back. Isn't it just for one night and a half days? Harmful, how can we not make good use of the quiet night? Feng Zichio gave Gu Yuan a simple and honest smile. By the way, Brother Yuan, how can you go back? Riding a bicycle, my house is not far from here, just in the flower garden in the south of the city. It can be there in twenty minutes. What about you? I also ride a bike, but I live quite far away. Feng Zichio touched his inch and said, Speaking of Qingnan Huayuan, I remember that a few months ago, was there a major car accident there? Is it really fake? Of course it's true, can there be any falsehood? Didn't you read the news? At that time, all the city news was talking about this matter, right? Gu Yuan said. The accident happened at that three-dot way intersection outside my residential area. At that time, two street lights were broken at the corner. It was originally said that someone would come to fix it in a week, but it only happened in two days. That day was Saturday, and a few classmates and I happened to come back from playing football at the new sports center. We saw a crowd of onlookers on the inner and outer floors of the road at the entrance of the community. A group of middle-aged and elderly people were chattering and discussing. It wasn't until the police and ambulance arrived and blocked the warning line that we saw the scene of the accident. Gu Yuan continued, a large truck loaded with steel plates couldn't see the motorcycle coming out from the left side due to the dead corner of the light, and even people and cars were flying away. 
The motorcycle was almost falling apart, and a large pool of black and red blood was flowing on the ground. Ah! So serious. Feng Zichio showed a surprised expression. Yeah, it said that the owner of the motorcycle almost died on the spot. As soon as he got into the ambulance, he swallowed his breath, and the truck driver seemed to have been diagnosed with fatigue driving later on. Gu Yuan tilted his head and thought about the scene at the time. I remember the guy we were with also took a few on dot site photos. But soon after, it was the high school entrance exam review, and no one continued to pay attention to this matter. So it's like this. Feng Zichio nodded thoughtfully, Brother Yuan, I'm leaving first. See you tomorrow. See you later. Gu Yuan was the only one left in the classroom. He walked into the storage room and looked at the cabinet he had cleaned up. He confirmed that nothing strange had suddenly fallen out of it. Just as he was about to leave, Chi Yu walked in from the door with a white canvas bag on his back. Why haven't you left yet? Chi Yu glanced at him and asked. I just had something to do and was about to leave. Why did you come back again? I forgot to take my things. Chi Yu bent down and lowered his head, rummaging through his cabinet. His long hair hung like a waterfall in front of Gu Yuan's body. After a while, he stood up straight, his hands crossed over his waist, pursed his lips, staring blankly at the light red table board, muttering, strange, how could it not be? What are you looking for? Chi Yu didn't pay attention to him, but frowned and took two steps back, standing at the door of the storage room. His thumbs and index fingers crossed into a rectangle and looked into the storage room. What are you doing, dancing god? Gu Yuan looked at Chi Yu, whose upper body was swaying left and right like a pendulum, and raised an eyebrow. Hey, feudal superstition kills people. Don't go astray. What? I was recalling my perspective at that time, don't interrupt, be quiet. Recalling perspective. What does it mean? Cut, don't you understand, don't you know? Standing in different positions, what you see is different. The so dot called recall perspective is to think about the angle of the picture I saw when I placed things, and use it to calculate the position of what I placed. I don't even know this, no wonder what you drew is always crisscrossing and full of imagination. Chi Yu shrunk his mouth, then his eyes lit up, and he took out a palm-sized booklet from the cabinet, he he, found it. Standing in different positions, what you see is different. Based on the angle of the picture you see, calculate the position you were in at that time. Gu Yuan chewed these two sentences repeatedly, and suddenly, he seemed to think of something. He hugged the girl in front of him and said excitedly, Chi Yu. You are really a genius. Ah. Ah. What? Of course I am. The sudden embrace startled Chi Yu. Just as she was stuttering to speak, Gu Yuan had already run out alone like a gust of wind, and his shadow was nowhere to be seen. Standing in different positions, what you see is different. Based on the angle of the picture you see, calculate the position you were in at that time. Gu Yuan held Li Rant's painting in one hand and rode his bicycle on the open road. The early autumn evening wind blew the white clouds, and sparrows sang on the barbed wire next to the basketball court. As the fiery sunset gradually sank, Gu Yuan's mind recalled the night six months ago. The police officers in blue uniforms separated the noisy crowd in the heavy dusk with yellow warning lines. The warning lights of the ambulance kept flashing, and a red pickup truck with 22 tires parked diagonally in the middle of the road. In front of them was a black motorcycle that was almost shattered from the collision. On the ground between these two vehicles with vastly different sizes, there was a large pool of dark red blood. Quickly, Gu Yuan arrived at the three-dot way intersection. He pressed the brake to slowly stop his bicycle, and raised Li Rant's painting with both hands. The dark red bloodstains on the painting slowly overlapped with the image he remembered, no it's not in this position. Gu Yuan frowned, the shape of the blood stain did not match his memory. It's impossible that he remembered wrong, it must be the wrong location. 
Gu Yuan has almost complete memory ability in life images, but unfortunately, this ability is greatly reduced in textual things. Therefore, when memorizing texts and vocabulary, he can only honestly copy and memorize them over and over again. Although it is much faster than ordinary people, it is far from enough to be unforgettable. If it weren't here, then it should be. Gu Yuan used the corner of his eye to pay attention to the oncoming car, adjusting his position. In the end, he stopped at the center of the road, and the dark red bloodstain he had painted in his hand finally perfectly matched the picture in his memory. This is. Gu Yuan couldn't help but be slightly taken aback. This position was already within the range of the warning line, and people unrelated to the accident should not be able to reach this position. Can you say? Gu Yuan dialed the phone of the classmate who was taking photos at the time, and after a brief busy tone, a lazy voice came from his ear. Hello. Ergo, do you still have photos of the car accident a few months ago? Yes, yes. Quick. Send it to me. Now, immediately, immediately. Brother Yuan, wait a minute. The photo is no longer on this phone. I'll change my phone after the middle school entrance exam, I need to look for it. Okay, if you find it, send it to me immediately. Thank you very much. I'll give you an assist next time I play football. Pushing open the door, as expected, there was no one around. Gu Yuan sat down on the sofa in the living room on the first floor, opened his phone, and saw that Yang Qin had already sent the photo. He lightly enlarged it with his fingers, and could clearly see a figure in a brown short sleeve tee. Shirt squatting on the small open space between the warning line and the ambulance. He held his knees in both hands, his expression showing no sadness, his eyes staring blankly at the noisy crowd ahead, his mouth tightly closed like a straight line. Although his clothes and hairstyle were different from now, Gu Yuan still recognized the familiar face at a glance. Li Ran. It's really him. After a brief silence, Gu Yuan opened his phone address book and found Feng Zichio's phone number, dialed it. Hello. Brother Yuan, what's wrong? I just got home. I know the reason why Li Ran drew blood in his self-portrait. End of this chapter.